years, America has dreamed of trains that move as fast as its ambitions. From the California high-speed rail to Texas Central and Brightline West, the country has made huge commitments to make high-speed rail a reality. Yet decades later, most of those dreams remain unfulfilled plans on paper tracks half-built. But now, one region is quietly making that dream a reality. It's the Midwest. The question is, is this where America's dream of speed begins to take off? And can this bold vision overcome the political cost and time barriers to become a reality? Find out in today's episode of On the Trains. But why did the high-speed rail dream begin in the Midwest of all places? Overview. Today, the Midwest is home to approximately 69.6 .6 million people, accounting for more than 20% of the country's population, and is the second most important urban industrial region after the Northeast. Over the past decade, 2010-2020, the region's population has grown by more than 3% with strong expansion around hubs such as Chicago, Indianapolis, Columbus, Minneapolis, and St. Louis. The average distance between these cities is only 250 to 500 kilometers, a perfect scale for a high-speed rail model that is faster than driving and more convenient than flying. Among these, the Chicago-Indianapolis corridor is considered one of the most potential and feasible routes. This route connects two major metropolitan areas with a total population of more than 11 million, including the Chicago metropolitan area with about 9.5 million people and the Indianapolis metropolitan area with more than 2 million people, growing by more than 7% over the past decade. The distance of just over 180 miles, 290 kilometers between these two economic centers, creates ideal conditions for high-speed rail development, long enough to demonstrate speed advantages but close enough to ensure cost and operational feasibility. Not only does it have the advantage of geographical location, the Midwest is also considered the transportation heart of the United States, where the busiest highways and and rail lines in the country intersect. The federal government has long viewed the region as an ideal platform for high-speed rail infrastructure thanks to its flat terrain, densely populated residential areas, and growing demand for travel between economic centers. The vision of a high-speed rail network across the U.S. Midwest has been evolving for more than a decade, driven by growing demand for cleaner, faster, and more connected transportation. The idea first took shape in 2009 when France's SNCF and the Midwest High-Speed Rail Association, now the High Speed Rail Alliance proposed a comprehensive system connecting nine major cities within 2.5 hours of Chicago. The plan positioned Chicago as the center of a new modern rail era, comparable to networks in Europe and Asia. By 2012, regional studies began to quantify the benefits of the initiative. Analysts pointed to its potential to boost regional economies, reduce carbon emissions, and connect urban and rural communities in ways that highways or airports could not. In 2021, the Federal Railroad Administration, FRA, officially designated the Chicago-Indianapolis corridor as part of the core high-speed rail network, marking a significant milestone. The line along with Chicago-Cleveland, Chicago-St. Louis, and Chicago-Nashville is the back backbone of the Chicago Hub Network, which is shaping up to be a seamless high-speed infrastructure connection between the region's major economic centers. So in many ways, the Chicago-Indianapolis line is considered one of the most viable and impactful corridors being studied. So how do we turn this grand dream into a practical and workable system? Let's find out in the next section. But first, we're on our way to 10,000 subscribers, and every click you make will help us keep this journey going. Thank you. Planning and Technical Design the proposed 180-mile, 290-kilometer corridor connects major urban centers and economic regions, stretching from Chicago through Gary and Lafayette to Indianapolis. Much of the route would utilize existing freight rail corridors operated by companies such as CSX Transportation and Norfolk Southern Railway. This approach significantly reduces land acquisition costs, environmental impacts, and the engineering complexity associated with constructing entirely new tracks. Combined with the region's relatively flat terrain and minimal need for tunneling or major bridges, the project gains a strong advantage in both cost efficiency and feasibility. To ensure effective implementation, the project could be divided into two phases. Phase 1 from Chicago to Lafayette and Phase 2 from Lafayette to Indianapolis. This phased approach helps distribute costs, manage construction more effectively, and allows early segments to demonstrate success before full completion. From a technical perspective, the system is designed for operating speeds between 150 and 220 miles per hour, 240 to 350 kilometers per hour, matching international high-speed rail standards. The line will use dedicated double-track infrastructure primarily for high-speed passenger service with limited freight sharing. Electrification will be provided through a 25 
25 kilovolt alternating current, the global standard for high-speed rail, ensuring strong traction performance, high capacity and environmental sustainability. The signaling and safety systems will feature advanced automatic controls compliant with international and U.S. standards such as the European Train Control System or Positive Train Control. These systems enable continuous communication, precise train supervision, and safety at speeds above 150 miles per hour in accordance with American Railway Engineering and Maintenance Association guidelines. In terms of connectivity, the corridor will link two primary terminals, Chicago Transit Station and Indianapolis Transit Station, along with intermediate stations at Merrillville, Lafayette, and Lebanon. These stops are strategically planned to serve suburban commuters and regional travelers while fostering transit-oriented development around each hub. Additional feasibility studies show that Midwest high-speed rail corridors, including the Chicago-Indianapolis line, are being evaluated for service speeds up to 220 miles per hour, 350 kilometers per hour, with potential for high-frequency operation up to 10 trains per hour in each direction. Each train could accommodate 550 to 1100 passengers, reinforcing the Chicago-Indianapolis corridor's role as a cornerstone of the future integrated Midwest high-speed rail network. Yet even the best design means little without the money to build it. Funding and progress. The total investment for the Chicago-Indianapolis high-speed rail line is estimated at 25 to 26 billion dollars or about $90 million per kilometer of figure, comparable to large-scale projects such as California High-Speed Rail. The funding is expected to be raised through a mixed investment model with 60-70% coming from Federal Sources FRA and the U.S. Department of Transportation, 20-30% to from the state budgets of Illinois and Indiana, and the remainder from Public-Private Partnerships PPPs to promote innovation and improve operational efficiency. As of 2025, the project is in the Environmental Impact Study EIS phase led by the Federal Railroad Administration FRA and the participating states. The 2025-2028 phase will focus on detailed design and engineering approvals. Phase 1, the Chicago Lafayette section is expected to start construction between 2028 and 2035. Phase 2, the Lafayette Indianapolis section will be implemented between 2035 and 2040. When completed, the rail line could be operational by 2040, becoming the Midwest's first true high-speed corridor and a symbolic step toward a more modern connect. So what would all this investment actually bring to the Midwest and what might stand in its way? Benefits and Challenges this high-speed rail line is expected to open a new turning point for the development of the Midwest. Economically, the project could create approximately 70,000 jobs per year during the construction phase, from engineers and workers to supporting industries such as material production and engineering services. Once operational, the line could generate more than $13.8 billion in annual commercial revenue for the Chicago metropolitan area, along with $2.2 billion in annual passenger revenue. Intermediate stations such as Lafayette and Lebanon are expected to become new growth engines, helping to increase land values, promote service industries, and stimulate local growth. According to the High Speed Rail Alliance, every $1 invested in high speed rail can yield $3 to $4 in long term economic benefits, thanks to spillover effects on trade tourism and labor productivity. Socially, the High Speed Rail Line connects the region's industrial, academic, and creative centers such as Chicago Purdue University in Lafayette and the capital Indianapolis. It not only shortens travel times, but also expands opportunities for learning, working, and cross-state collaboration, transforming the Midwest into a new connecting circle of knowledge and technology economy. In addition, the project also has important environmental implications. The shift from automobiles and aviation to high-speed rail could reduce CO2 emissions by more than 3 million tons per year, reducing air pollution and noise in urban areas. The fully electrified 25 kilovolt system also aligns with the Federal Railroad Administration's Net Zero 2050 strategy, helping the United States move closer to carbon neutrality. In addition, the areas surrounding the intermediate station are oriented to develop according to the transit-oriented development model promoting green, sustainable, and community-connected cities. However, along with those benefits come a series of financial, political, and social challenges that the project must overcome. Financially, the biggest problem lies in mobilizing stable and long-term federal funding. Until now, support from the central government has depended on the priorities and budgets of each state, while the project needs a unified cross-state investment framework at the national level similar to the former Interstate Highway Program. Without strong leadership from Washington, the project could be at risk of being behind schedule or lacking resources. 
Attracting private investment under the PPP model is also a difficult problem when short-term profits in the rail sector are often lower than in other sectors such as aviation or trucking. The social and environmental challenges are also not small. Land clearance and ensuring environmental justice in areas like Gary Calumet are sensitive issues because these are densely populated areas with many working communities and a long industrial history. For the project to be approved, the government needs to gain strong consensus from the people along with a transparent, comprehensive, and responsible environmental impact assessment process. Although the road to realizing the project still has many challenges from cost corridor approvals to community consensus, its importance is undeniable. In the context of climate Climate change and rapid urbanization, a clean, fast, and efficient transportation system like HSR is a necessary turning point for the United States. Ultimately, the Chicago-Indianapolis line is more than just an infrastructure project. It's a statement about how Americans see their mobility future. It embodies the pioneering spirit of the Midwest, the birthplace of the interstate, now paving the way for a new generation of transportation. If executed with a long-term vision and strong political will, the project could become a symbol of the rebirth of American high-speed rail in the 21st century. That's all for today. See you.